I've been trying to get the 3DR radio system working on the Ardu Pilot 2.5 on my large H-Quad for a little while and finally cracked it this morning, reading through the forums on um, a couple of the bits and pieces on the web it's been really difficult to figure out what was actually wrong so trying to work through it and get it working I thought it would be useful to kind of share those experiences with you talk about the radios a little bit as well show you them in use and also show you the common gotchas and how I actually got these little things working this morning uh, it was a relief when the system finally burst into life I've uh, enjoyed playing with the Bluetooth connection on the multi wii board in one of my other videos. Um, it's been very useful to be able to connect wirelessly and look at the telemetry information, do the setup, PIDs and other bits and pieces. Um, the APM 2.5 board has a slightly more sophisticated way of doing it. It actually uses these uh, radios that come in two frequencies depending on the country you're in. I'm here in the UK so it's 433 MHz. This is the ground station and there's also a uh, identical almost radio that goes in the air side that plugs into the APM 2.5. Um, I finally figured how to get this all working this morning and wanted to share it with you because one of the problems that I had seems to crop up occasionally in the forums on the internet and I couldn't find a good answer so I thought I would do the video to explain it. So what actually comes in the pack are the radios themselves. Um, this one I've actually covered in shrink wrap um, just because it uh, gives it an extra level of protection from moisture when it's out in the field. Um, there's also uh, one that's slightly smaller that goes into the aircraft and then a couple of pretty straightforward aerials that go onto the end. It also comes with this cable. Um, I have to show you a picture of it that I've pulled from the internet because I've had to pull my cable apart and I'll explain about why I've had to do that in a little while. Nice thing about these is that it has selectable channels and power so you can configure it through the, uh, the standard mission planner software to work in exactly the way you need so um, they're very versatile little things. They're about $45, $50 for the pair and the cable. Um, but uh, it gives you an awful lot more functionality when you're flying your drone. The cable that came with this kit was actually the wrong one for the board. Um, here's a picture of how it actually plugs into the APM 2.5. It's using a 5 pin connector and on the other end it's actually a 4 pin connector. Now these connectors are actually called DF13s so if you search on the internet for DF13 you'll be able to find them and buy them. I couldn't buy them individually uh, or I think I found one place but the special crimpers that you needed to then make the ends off were horrendously expensive. So the way I got around this I actually ordered two cables. This is one of them. It's a uh, DF 5 pin connector going into um, I think it was about a 30 centimeter or a 15 centimeter lead something like that and I also had a similar cable but a DF 4 pin and what I did is I popped the end off one of the cables and the way I did this is on these cables you can actually lift these small teeth up with a pin and then withdraw each of these cables out and then doing that you can actually make your cable up in the way that works for you. Now the nice thing is uh, it's very, very clearly labelled if you're going to make a cable like this on how you put them together. 5 volt goes to 5 volt, ground goes to ground and the interesting thing is the transmit on one board goes to receive on the other and vice versa. So you can actually see it on the back of the airside radio, it's all written. On the underside of the APM board it's all clearly labelled so all you have to do is just follow those instructions to make the cable up and plug it in. On the ground station uh, even easier, it has the connected um, USB port, you just slide it in, if it's after Windows XP you don't need a driver, it'll just configure it and uh, automatically set it up. So what we'll do now is we'll actually set the link up and get it working, I'll slide this into the USB port at the side of the PC. You'll see that there's a blinking green light on the board. The green light indicates that it is looking for a connection. If I now power up the quad with the, the air side board radio in it, you'll see that that board immediately, that light goes solid. 
and you can see a bit of activity on the board already. So what we'll do now is we'll actually start the Mission Planner software and I'll talk you through one or two of the features. So what we'll do now, we've got the board plugged in, we'll start the Mission Planner software. I've just updated this, it's now version 1.2.72. When it's all started, uh, what we're going to do is go into the initial setup and 3DR radio section and click on load settings. So we click on initial setup, click on 3DR radio, and then click on load settings. Now, what should happen is um, the software will speak to the local board, download all the local information, and then over the wireless link, and we know it's connected because we have that solid green light, bring down all of the remote settings as well. So there we are, we can actually see the board rate and everything else. Now, one of the things you have to be careful of here, when I did this first time, you can actually set this board rate to anything and defaulted to uh, 115200. It has to be on 57600 or 57k for it to work. So if you're getting gobbledygook or this isn't working, make sure that that says 57600. So that looks pretty good to me. That's all going to work. So what we'll do now is we'll go into flight data click on connect and wirelessly over the link it'll start to download all of the information we've lost the heartbeat bear me a second I'm going to just plug it in again will connect this time. Here it comes. So sometimes if it's not in use for a little while, the heartbeat or the little flashing light stops. So you just have to be a bit careful of that. So here it comes, all the different bits and pieces. The lights on the radio are flashing like crazy. And we're connected. So uh, we're actually looking up in the sky because the quad is <laughs> at an angle at the moment, but it gives you all the facts and figures about the quad and the other bits and pieces and location. So there we are, we're doing it um, wirelessly. Now, if you have problems, let's talk about a few of the gotchas about how this thing didn't, didn't work. Um, First thing you always got to make sure is that you have 57600 selected as the board rate for the COM port that's been created for the ground side radio. Um, second thing you have to be a little bit careful of is when you're when you're going into that initial setup and you're looking at the 3DR radio section is to make sure that you can click that link and you can see both the local and the remote bits and pieces and you have a sol solid green LED. If you do, that means then not only is the conversation between your computer and the local radio working but the conversation between the local radio and the airside radio on the model is absolutely fine too. I found that even though all that was working it this still wouldn't work and I still couldn't see the model I still couldn't see the flight data. The challenge I had with that was that um, all the forums were, were being really unhelpful and uh, people were just kind of you know shrugging their shoulders and going hmm, I don't know get a new board. Um, what I did to sort it, I actually went into initial setup, went into the 3DR and actually updated the firmware on both of the radios. Now for the ground station, this ground station is obviously plugged in by the USB port, without having a link active you just click upload firmware and uploads it. But the challenge is how you upload the firmware into the airside radio so that they're both on the latest bits and pieces. Um, what I did, I actually created this cable. So this is the wiring diagram of how I did it. I took the FTDI connector that you used to talk to a multi-wii and used the cable that came with the board. I actually took each of the uh, pins out of it and created this cable, plugged the pins into the FTDI connector. Um, so that what I could do is I could actually then flash 
the airside radio with the latest firmware. Once I'd done each of those, I actually confirmed that the settings in terms of the board, the airspeed, the transmitter power, the min max frequency, the channels, all that stuff was identical, and then plugged it back in and it worked fine. So, in summary, what I'd say is that it's a great solution. You have to be, um, you know, if you haven't got an FTDI adapter to actually change um, some of the bits and pieces. Um, on the air side, you might think of investing in one when you order this. It's only five or six dollars. Um, the nice thing is there's no changes to the APM needed. You don't have to change the code. You don't have to set up any switches. It does it automatically. When you're checking uh, for any problems connected to the APM remotely, double check that the cable is right, that the receive and transmit wires are crossed over on that cable. And finally, if all else fails, make your FTDI enable up and um, connect it to both the local and the air side and actu actually use this thing to flash the firmware and reset everything from scratch and it should work. Hopefully that's helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Um, happy flying. Post any comments or questions.